weeks since we've been blessed with the winter, I've been trying to remind people pretty routinely to fast Mondays and Thursdays and some of the narrations that we have about the blessing of fasting Mondays and Thursdays. And subhanAllah, you know, when it comes to the winter, you have all of these narrations from the Salaf, from the pious predecessors that refer to winter as the spoils of the believer. Why? Because Allah has made the day short, so fasting is easy and the nights are long for prayer. And though the days are shorter, the reward is not decreased. The days are shorter, but the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still just as great when we fast these days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us where the sunset comes so early. Now, when you talk about fasting, typically you hear about the rewards of fasting when Ramadan comes around. But I wanted to talk about some of the rewards of fasting that we probably are either unaware of or are not as explicit, but they have such meaningful consequences in our lives. So, you can go through the ones that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, that are explicit and that specifically refer to the reward in the hereafter. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ mentions that whoever fasts three days of the month, it's as if they have fasted the entire year. Why? Because a good deed is rewarded at the very least by 10 times 10. And so if you're fasting Ramadan and that covers 10 and you're fasting three days and it covers 10, then it covers the entire month. Therefore, it covers the entire year. And so it's as if you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having fasted an entire lifetime. You have the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentions the gates of paradise. And he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bab al-rayyan, a specific gate of fasting. Now, the gates of Jannah, the gates of paradise that refer to good deeds that we might do at their usual times are for people that are distinguished by those deeds. And so, for example, there's Bab al-Salah, the gate of prayer. Now, we have to pray uh, to be Muslims, but the gate of prayer is for those that are distinguished with their Salah, likewise with charity, likewise with fasting, and so on and so forth. And what makes Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu so special is that he was distinguished in all of the deeds, and therefore he is called from all eight gates of paradise, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the same station. Allahumma ameen. So you have a special gate of al-Jannah, Bab al-Rayyan, uh, for those that are distinguished with fasting. SubhanAllah, you have the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he mentions that whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will put between him and the hellfire the distance of a journey of 70 years. One day is like a lifetime of distance from the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it. Allahumma ameen. So you have that hadith. You have all of the hadith which talk about how fasting is distinguished in what it brings about of sincerity, where you have the hadith Qudsi that all of the deeds of the son of Adam are for him, except for fasting. Fasting is for me and I reward accordingly. You have the hadith that uh, refer to fasting as a form of patience. And of course, fasting is a sabr. It's literally the act known as a sabr, uh, patience. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it for those that uh, were having trouble getting married, for example. He said ﷺ, that fasting is a shield. It is a way of maintaining patience and it's a shield from that which one fears. So you have those ahadith. And subhanAllah, what I wanted to talk about um, and of course, you have the hadith of, of the deeds being presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Monday and Thursday in specific. And uh, therefore, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said he wanted to be in a state of fasting when the deeds are presented to Allah. You have the, the hadith about Monday uh, being the day that the Prophet ﷺ was born. And so it's a form of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Prophet ﷺ would fast on Mondays and, and we too fast on Mondays. All of these are hadith, right? But subhanAllah, one thing that I think we really uh, may not uh, pay attention to is the unique way that fasting builds character. Fasting builds character. How? Because if you're fasting, particularly Mondays and Thursdays, by the way, which is the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and you're fasting in a way that you're not just abstaining from food and drink and your desires, but you're abstaining from those other things that we're reminded of with the fast of Ramadan, where the Prophet ﷺ talks about a person who doesn't leave off idle speech and doesn't leave off false testimony. And Allah Azza has no need for their leaving off of food and drink if they don't leave off those things. And so we're reminded every Ramadan about the importance of fasting from backbiting as well, and fasting from gossip, and fasting from false testimony. 
and the fasting of our limbs from things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, I want you to think about that in regards to our Mondays and Thursdays. Monday is the first day of the week where, you know, we're, we're really getting into the mix of things and everything uh, peaks on Monday, right? Everything uh, has increased usage on Monday. And if a person is going into the beginning of the week fasting and they are specifically trying to fill their day with things that fill the soul and things that bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they are starving themselves and removing themselves from food and drink and their shahawat, their desires. And in the process of that, they're also cutting down on their social media time. They're also making sure that they're, they're very mindful about their usage of technology, that they're very conscious about what they're saying in their conversations, that they're paying, they're, they're not looking at something that is going to be displeasing. So their eyes are fasting, their ears are fasting, their tongue is fasting, their fingers are fasting, right? All of these different faculties are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by holding back from things that are displeasing to Him. SubhanAllah, imagine what that means for your character, for your akhlaq. If you're not just fasting on Monday and Thursday to get the reward, and you know, it, it's just natural that just like people might not take their voluntary prayers, you know, they might rush through their voluntary prayers a little bit quicker than they do their obligatory prayers. You know, we might not take our voluntary fast as seriously as we take our fasting in Ramadan. And of course, the obligatory is more serious than the voluntary. But trying to bring about that same, uh, that same level of consciousness to avoid those sins that pollute the character, particularly when you're trying to you know, keep your fasting intact. You're trying to keep your character intact as well. Imagine the implications of that for a lifetime. And so subhanAllah, you know, it's not just bringing about uh, Bab al-Rayyan, the gate of, of fasting uh, for Jannah, but you're trying to make sure you're praying your sunnahs, you're abstaining from uh, the things that are forbidden that cause a person to be bankrupt on the day of judgment uh, because Allah Azza wa causes their deeds to be taken away from them because of their bad characteristics. You are giving sadaqah, you're giving charity during the day of fasting. So you might be opening the gate of charity for yourself as well. You might be visiting a sick person or, you know, visiting the graveyard or doing some of these other actions, right? Calling and checking in on people. All of that to beautify your fast and in the process, beautify your character. And you're not just getting the reward of fasting for an entire lifetime, but you could be changing your character for a lifetime and in the process elevating yourself in the status and the stations that would cause a person to be higher and higher and higher in al-Jannah. And so it's not just that fasting removes a person from hellfire for a distance of a journey of seven years. It's that most people fall into the depths of hellfire because of what their tongues uh, uh, pronounce, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, because of what the tongues harvest of slander, of gossip, of backbiting, of evil. And so you're abstaining from that too. So it could be even more, subhanAllah, than the seven years. It's not just the gate of paradise of fasting, but it's also pushing you to the other actions that open the other gates of paradise. It's not just the reward of fasting a lifetime. It's not just the reward of your deeds being presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you're fasting. It could be that because you're fasting, your deeds are also being presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're not backbiting because you're fasting, right? And so I just wanted us to, to really reflect on that. And let's encourage one another. Let's encourage one another. Obviously, when it comes to voluntary good deeds, um, you know, it's good for a person to keep some of it secret between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But just like with charity, just like with the other good deeds to promote virtue, let's remind one another. And so find uh, a fasting buddy. Find, you know, if, if you have your family around you and they can fast, push them to fast. Uh, if you have some friends and you want to encourage them by saying, hey, you know, I know people are doing Zoom iftars now. Let's do Zoom iftars together. But just remind one another, bi ta'ala, and let's keep our ummah, our bleeding ummah, in our du'as, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and this is another benefit of fasting, that the du'a of the fasting person is accepted until they break their fast. So let's keep each other in our prayers, bi ta'ala, uh, especially while we're fasting, and the list goes on and on of the benefits of fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from al-qa'imin, make us from those that are devout, that stand in prayer, that fast regularly, 
that give charity regularly, that are devoted regularly. Adhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat, those that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently from the men and the women. May Allah make us of those categories that are pleasing to Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find us worthy to be entered by His mercy into the highest level of Jannah to Firdaus in the companionship of our Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa